and welcome back to the Ed Break Questionarium. Did you manage to guess the identity of this popular video game character? If you answered the Arbiter from the Halo series, you're wrong. He was never popular. Thanks for playing, and see you next time on the Ad Break Questionarium. Oh dear God, when it comes to all-time calamities of movie tie-ins, you can't go much further wrong than Absolute Entertainment's 1993 release of the largely forgotten Robin Williams flick, Toys. And for once they didn't make a movie license into a platformer, but instead into an isometric action game. A good idea? No. This was one heck of a bad idea. If you play as Robin Williams, I couldn't be bothered to look up what he's called in the movie, but you basically go around trying to destroy your evil uncle's military toys using an, ahem, arsenal of vastly superior weapons, such as an elephant's head that shoots peanuts, a clockwork duck, spinning tops, and water balloons that explode in a puddle of green liquid. <laughs> Surely a stockade to frighten any dictator. Yeah, the war in Iraq would have been long over to have had those sort of weapons. But the game is so mind-numbingly monotonous. You wander around aimlessly trying to destroy security cameras while picking up presents, stuff that looks like sick on the floor, all while basically receiving a whooping. Especially when your enemies are tanks, jeeps, helicopters that don't make any sound and suicide bombing bombs. And you just can't move half of the time. There's just far too many enemies on the screen and your overly weak weapons, which only stun them rather than destroy them, give you absolutely no chance whatsoever. Toys isn't exactly the prime candidate to become a game, as with a lot of movie licenses. But the irony is that this would have been one game that probably would have been better off as a platformer. As it is though, this is one toy you definitely want to keep out the reach of small children. In recent times, there have been a few video game conversions of movies based on classic US TV shows. Starskin Hutch immediately springs to mind. So does Miami Vice and the Dukes of Hazard. So when Charlie's Angels was announced, no one really raised an eyelid. That was until everyone saw how abysmal it was. Charlie's Angels is nothing short of an assault on all the senses of a gamer. It has absolutely horrible controls, terrible camera angles, monotonous combat and some of the dumbest AI ever to grace a video game in recent years. And don't get me started on the graphics. Indeed. Just look at this zombie here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's supposed to be Cameron Diaz. Can you actually believe that this is an officially licensed likeness of her? I'm no Barry Norman either. But the last time I saw her in a flick, she wasn't bald. Well, unless they've been using too much of that special hair gel from There's Something About Mary. And when a female character climbs up a ladder in her smalls, it should be something that every male gamer dreams about. But when it looks like this, and it's this slow, it ends up giving you wet nightmares. There may be some people out there who may not approve of the half-nakedness of the characters involved. But then again, no gamer would be keen to play this at all, because it's an utter travesty. But for something that's referred to as angels, it sure looks like it's been spewed out of the pits of hell. You'd need to be some sort of sadomasochist to get any sort of kick out of this game. With all the kung fu action in this car crash of a game, it still wouldn't last five minutes in a fight with our next title. This is Thaddeus, captain of the Osiris, and I fear this will be our last transmission. There's a big reason this one is here. It's not just a simple case that it's a bad game, it's just everything that went with it. The hype surrounding the sequels to The Matrix was reaching absolute fever point. This was almost going to be like the next Star Wars. So when it was announced that a Matrix game would be made to coincide with the new movies, gamers really thought that this was going to be the one that finally broke the mould of bad movie licences. It just seemed to have everything going for it. The world of the Matrix was an ideal setting for a video game. Slow motion gunfights, high octane kung fu and some awesome bullet dodging action. And when you consider it's one of the most expensive games ever made, with the amount of money thrown at it, how could it possibly fail? Well, it was crud for a start. Slow motion, bullet time style crud. Still on paper, it almost seemed like the perfect movie style game. Not only was it written and directed by the Wachowski brothers themselves, but it was also designed by industry legend Dave Perry. 
and then it hits you like a slow motion kick to the virtual knackers. You don't get to play as Neo. Nope. Instead, you get to play as some random reject from the new movie that no one could care less about. Apparently, playing as Neo wouldn't be possible, as he was just far too powerful, despite the fact they released the exact same thing a few years later. So no bullet stopping, flying or jumping inside agents for you, sir. Instead, the game follows some Chinese bloke and Will Smith's wife throughout the vents of the Matrix Reloaded and other elements that expanded the Matrix universe. Scenes that appeared in the movie were delved upon further in the game, and often in extremely repetitive ways, like the infamous sewer level, a level so infamous gamers still wake up screaming even to this day. I got a feeling it's gonna be one hell of a ride. Yeah, hell being the operative word, the driving sections were just one giant glitchy mess making it show how obviously rushed it was. After the short amount of time it takes to get bored with the full game, you can spend countless hours trying to hack the Matrix itself. So when you find yourself having more fun with a DOS-like screen than the full game itself, there's certainly something wrong. It's nice to have something to look forward to. Have something to look forward to? And look how it turned out. One big steaming part of disappointment. Yeah, it makes me wish I swallowed a blue pill. Just in case you develop brain damage or amnesia during the last 19 minutes and 39 seconds, let's have ourselves a recap of our other cinematic gaming catastrophes on the list before we get to our number one. At number 10, we're stuck in the middle with Pooh with Reservoir Dogs. Macaulay Culkin screaming in our faces with Home Alone at number nine. At number eight, I'm Jack's sense of no gameplay with Fight Club. It's party time! It's excrement! With Wayne's World at number seven. Number six gets tarred and feathered with Howard the Duck. From good game to bad movie to crud game with Street Fighter the movie, the game at number five. Number four has choking hazards aplenty with toys. Cat fighting crud with Charlie's Angels at number three. At number two, we recommend you dodge the bullet with Enter the Matrix. And our number one for our worst movie licensed game of all time is, you guessed it, the one and only. The film that made so many people cry in the theaters made the same people cry when they played the game. Especially after they spent 40 quid in this stinking pile of spaceship. I mean, it's pretty much had to be at number one. A title so infamously bad, so terrible, so mind-numbingly awful, that it almost brought the collapse of the entire video game industry in America. The game was fantastically devised. Scientists kidnap you and leave you in some easily escapable Roman forum. There's a guidance arrow that seems to have no purpose whatsoever other than to confuse you, and some dodgy looking raincoat wearing FBI agents that steal your phone pass. E.T. No phone home. And don't forget those darn pits. No matter where you move, where you go, you don't know where they're gonna be. But one thing's for sure, you'll find yourself falling to those blooming things again, and again, and again, and again. All right, Wes. Calm down, mate. You can always get yourself out again. You just extend E.T.'s neck and float out of the pit. And isn't it great to know that you'll be doing it countless times? I'm falling in one again! Ah, oh, but that's the genius behind the game. You fall into the incredibly annoying visible pits on purpose to find the phone parts you need, so E.T. can phone home. I'll phone someone in a minute to go and kick the crud out of the Pepper Army looking scumbag. Of course, most sane human beings don't enjoy constantly falling into invisible pits. So put it to blind arrogance, they spend $25 million on the license, then hired one man for six weeks who hadn't even seen the movie to make the thing, and then they were surprised that it was awful. And to top it all off, Atari being so confident that the game would be so popular that they made 7 million copies, despite the fact that only 6 million Atari 2600s actually existed at the time. And you don't need to be some sort of genius to figure out that these well thought out executive decisions led to one of the biggest bombs in history. So where did the copies end up? A discount store? A freebie bundle with a console? A cover mount on a magazine? No, 
they ended up in a dump in the Nevada desert. Though some people from Atari have denied it. But then again, they would, wouldn't they? Oh, the irony. E.T. Games being thrown to some random pit. <laughs> Talk about real life imitating art. So a title that not only almost destroyed Atari, but the entire gaming industry in America had to be our number one. No title in any genre has ever come close to creating the amount of damage E.T. did to gaming. And that's why it deserves, nay, demands having the pride of place as number one on our all-time list. So if you ever see one of these copies stretching its neck out of its hole, do the world a favour and shove it back in. So there you go, our compilation of the 10 worst movie licenses of all time. While the movies around them may not have been so bad, the game adaptations certainly were. If the BBFC ever gave ratings for how bad games were, these titles would be getting a PG. Pathetically ghastly. So that's it from us. See you next time on Wes and Larry's Top 10s.